The Declaration of Independence has a nice formulation. To secure these rights, governments are instituted among men. To secure these rights. What does that mean? What does security of rights mean? You can also look at the state constitutions and say, how did they describe the purpose of government? Was it the same? Was it security of rights? And the answer is, well, they used, sometimes they often, they use different language. One of the terms that was often used as the, to explain the purpose of government is the word protection. Protection is what the uh, government is supposed to do, meaning protection against harm to your own life, liberty, and property. And that protection is to, has two sides. Uh, it, it's the side of the national government against, against the uh, outsiders, potential foreign attack, and protection against your fellow citizens who might harm you, in, the, uh, in harm your life, liberty, or property because of their, because they're misbehaving. So um, protection, uh, there's a, you know, let me just give you an example from the Virginia Declaration of Rights. Government ought to be instituted for the common benefit, protection, and security of the people, nation, or community. So that's what to secure these rights means. Protection, benefit and protection and security of the, peop of the people, nation, or community. Again, the emphasis is not on, is on, is on our people. The government is not protecting people in Mexico or Canada or elsewhere in the world. Uh, that's a subject that is often misunderstood today. There's an assumption today that if there's human rights are universal, it's the job of every government in the world to protect rights all over the world. The founders rejected that idea completely and totally. Uh, another example from the New Jersey Constitution preamble, uh, the King of Great Britain has refused protection to the good people of these colonies, therefore we have a right to revolution. Refused protection, that was the one word. You're not protecting us against injury, and in fact, as New Jersey went on to say, is you're attacking us, you're harming us. You're harming our people, you're putting soldiers here and shooting at us. So... Um, then the question becomes, well, all right, what policies does the government have to adopt in order to do this protecting of the people? Um, so the uh, first point, of course, is protecting from out, protecting, protection against outsiders by means of armed forces, by means of what we call foreign policy, diplomacy, statecraft, negotiation, perhaps making alliances, but in the end, it comes down to, do you have soldiers in the field who can physically defeat a potential or an actual threat to the life, liberty, and property of American citizens? So this first part of government's protect protection or protective duty is um, about armed forces, and that, of course, does include border enforcement. Uh, one of the points of having a nation of your own is it's for the people who live here. Anyone who wants to come here has to ask permission. And permission is not automatic. It's given, again, by consent of the governed, by the consent of the people who live here. The idea of a universal right to immigrate to a nation that says, I don't want you here, founders would have said, no, that's, that's immoral. That's a violation of the moral principle that all men are created equal and that we therefore, who have created our own government, have a moral right to say, who will be our future fellow citizens? Uh, that's our duty and our right, uh, not someone else's. The second part of protection and what government has to do to protect is, uh, is to create laws against crimes. That's the most urgent part of the, uh, of the domestic politics side of the founder's argument. And so one of the uh, topics that came up early on in America it, it, in, during the revolution and, and uh, in its aftermath was to create constitutions and laws to uh, protect citizens. Criminal laws, for example. Uh, Jefferson had a great quote on that in his, uh, he, he put together a proposed revision of the laws of the state of Virginia uh, at, in, in uh, 1778. Uh, in which he states that uh, it's precisely because vicious and uh, immoral men who try to take away the rights of other people that we have criminal law. And without criminal law, he said, the purpose of society would not be achieved, by which he meant 
protection and security of life, liberty, and property. So if you ask people today, sometimes I'll ask my students, how does the government secure our rights? They'll often give you a statement like, well, that's what the Supreme Court is for, and they have rules against discrimination and so on. Well, the founders would say, no, government protects your rights, not just through the judiciary, but through all three branches of government. You have to have a legislature to make laws. You have to have an executive to carry out arrests and prosecutions and uh, punishments and a judiciary to decide, is this person who's accused by the government truly guilty or not guilty? You need all three branches. That's what makes government protection possible through criminal law. And, uh, and that's what we see, you know, occasionally there are TV shows based on this idea of, you know, trials, people prosecute. That's how it's supposed to work. One of the uh, characteristic features of government today in America is the deprioritization of criminal law enforcement. Um, not everywhere, but especially in major cities of America today, um, the ability of, of uh, police and prosecutors to, to, to find criminals, prosecute them successfully, and have them punished is minimal. Uh, there are some cities in which the uh, police, if they're called out on a, th a theft, if you call the police and say, somebody stole something out of my house, they'll go, okay, we'll fill out a report for you. You can take it to the insurance company. But no, we're not going to look into it. The founding fathers would say, you guys don't get what government is for. It's for protection. And protection means you have to deter crime by making it clear to people who commit crimes, they're going to pay a penalty. So... You know, figure out why, you know, what, what's wrong? What happened? Why, why do our priorities somehow go somewhere else? And if you ask police departments today or prosecuting, they'll say, well, we don't have a budget for it. Which means something has gone wrong at the level of the state legislature or at the level of city government there, where money is being spent on something less that is of lower priority than actual protection of the lives and properties of citizens. That's a problem from the point of view of the founders, but it is the way we do government today.